Hey everybody, welcome hey everybody. back. We're live with uh, The Hangover, Cosmos mm-hmm. with Cosmos. This is, this is where shit gets good. This is where shit gets real. As opposed to the last hour and a half where it was terrible. Yeah. <laughs> terrible. <laughs> we went too far down the science rabbit hole, talked about quantum mechanics for a little bit. And a lot of bulges. A lot happening. of bulges. A lot of bulges. Bulges and holes. What's your favorite galactic bulge? <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, welcome to The Hangover. <laughs> oh, do you um, have notes for this part? Well, uh, somebody put notes in there. I did, because <laughs> I was just spitballing with random thoughts. Um, so first of all, we should ask, you know, the audience, I don't know, Jack or Katie or one of the, or many other fans are out there, um, any things that you would like us to discuss, talk about, dive into, we gladly will. Mm-hmm. Um, but until that time, we have some buffer time for them to create their own questions. Uh-huh. Uh, so let me ask you this. Our Milky Way is a bigger galaxy with about mm-hmm. 200 to... I always say about 300 billion stars. That seems okay. about right to me. Okay. Um, but what about the galaxy that's far, far away? How okay. big did you... We are suspending after this. Oh, absolutely. Uh, the Star Wars drinking rule is now suspended <laughs> while this question is answered. Be- because we're, we're talking about how big do you think the Star Wars galaxy is, which is actually a deep question. Is well, so, 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 look, <laughs> I mean, it, I mean, I would say that it's in terms of stars. I'm assuming you know the answer to this. No, oh, I should have looked. I it mean, up. is there enough information to know that in reality? I mean, because if we base it just off of our knowledge of Star Wars, it's probably what? relatively the same size we, as our own galaxy because it's probably I based can, off our own galaxy. I can't say that. No, it's my, that's only much smaller than our own galaxy. Think, for example, Han, even with you know the warp speed they have mm-hmm. or whatever it is they call it, Han Solo is going from one edge of the galaxy to the other. Hyperdrive, thank you. Um, and there are neighborhoods of major stars with civilizations around it. Mm-hmm. They are split up into the core, inner, middle, and outer sections. Yeah. And even within those, there's only 40, 50 actual stars that are habitable around it. Mm. And so if you imagine, you know, the Milky Way galaxy, mm-hmm. we can have 50 habitable planets within a galactic stone's throw. And so they don't That's have that true. many habitable planets, so it's got to be smaller. I mean, I would assume that, yeah, it would have to be smaller just because, I mean, to have the possibility of different civilizations spread throughout a galaxy that are able to interact. And they have a galactic house of representatives. Yeah. To thousands have, of species. To have, to have evolved to the point where you have multi-species civilizations with a uh, like a galactic government, you would think it would need to be smaller to get that. But then again, we don't know the time frame upon their evolution, you know, and, and Mike has an answer. Well, I have Wikipedia. <laughs> Wikipedia is typically the right. Ultimate. <laughs> yeah. W- uh, Wikipedia. Is it Wiki um, or Wiki? Wikipedia. Wiki. Uh, thank God. Uh, Jack, though, on Twitter, on uh, YouTube, <laughs> says, is Camino in the halo of that galaxy or is it in a cannibalized or regular galaxy nearby? Well, Camino was just a planet that wasn't in the record, so it's not necessarily out of the galaxy. Okay. It just wasn't in the records. I, I'll, I'll need to be watching. Well, and also, things. if you think about the ending to... Uh, no, 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 I'm not doing this. <laughs> But we will. So remember at the end of Empire, uh, when Luke, I mean, Leia, and folks are in the medical at frigid, their own galaxy from a distance. That wasn't their own galaxy. It was their own galaxy. Then they need to. It would be relatively small to be so close to it as they Except were. Except the premise is wrong. It. it was their own galaxy. Okay, but the galaxy they live in um, is between one hundred and one hundred and twenty thousand light years across. Sound familiar to everybody? So, our, yeah, our galaxy is um, 100,000. And it's approximately 13 billion years old. That's a, that's... So, basically, they evolved on a much faster rate than um, our galaxy has evolved at, intellectually. Because we just know of us. Yeah, the galaxy was on... Just unless, as- unless there is a whole galactic government for our galaxy, but they're leaving us out because we're not ready. Sorry, yet. you got to say it right. There's only one government in space, and that is the First Galactic Empire! <laughs> that one. <laughs> so this is how democracy dies, is it? 
The Thunderous Applause. The Thunderous Applause. Indeed. Sorry, sorry, it, die long time ago. It, it was home to, 20, uh, to between Ooh. 5 and 20 million sentient species. Jack just made a good point. Evolved or manufactured? Okay, so I don't... I've not read too many um, legend Star Wars. Okay. Um, so I'm assuming in Legends, there has to be some kind of reference to older civilizations out there. Um, but as far as we know, within the canon, uh, Tatooine is the oldest civilization out there. Mm. Um, it used to be a lush green planet and it went out no, to... No, it's it. crap. Yeah, it, well... It, it's what climate change will do to the Earth. Also having two stars. Oh, yeah, that's a big fact. <laughs> I forgot about that. Um, but they were the first civilization in the galaxy and they went out to colonize several other worlds until they beat back by other civilizations. Mm. Which is weird because even though they the first ones to come out, other civilizations still beat them up. Um, so I would think it would be evolved rather than manufactured. Mm. But I do like the idea of bringing in some Hitchhiker's Guide where people can just create planets yes. and galaxies. I mean, there could be some element of manufacturing. I mean, looking at the it, it, advancements in technology that we have to, and, in order to be able to link. And to that point, not even necessarily technological uh, advancements, but you have that Force Plan from Clone Wars, and they have mm, untold powers true. that can create whatever. Yes. So it's possible that the Force actually was creating galaxies. Isn't the force of gravity? No. The many chlorians. <laughs> but it is, you know, when you actually think about evolution, obviously we have to use our own evolution as just a reference um, because it's the only data point that we have currently. Um, but if we look at our own planet's evolution and the span of star lives, because star stellar evolution is based in in physics it's not like stars yeah. can extend their lives you know and just keep going forever in order to keep well, civilizations around to be them. fair that's not a theory that jedi would tell you okay well <laughs> <laughs> if we're applying milky way physics to a galaxy far far away it, it's it's it, you know you, you think about how like the time frames, like if we look at the Earth, we have needed essentially four and a half billion years to have at least one intelligent species that can utilize radio waves. I was going to say penguins. <laughs> I, yeah, I was going to say, what is that uh, species? But you said radio waves. So to yeah. utilize radio waves. To be able to broadcast a signal is essentially what determines a species of being sort of intelligent in a sense. You know, to, to communicate on a on that level of frequency um, to be to be then discoverable by by others. You seeing that? You okay. see you seeing that bullshit? Midichlorians are nanobots that just fly out and do what you want. I've never Holy considered that as shit. possibilities. God damn it, Lucas. <laughs> um but I mean the time frames of evolution are so long that that but then you have it, it, it actually does seem so highly unlikely that a species on a planet can evolve to the point of space exploration around the same time as another species on another planet light years away. It's unlikely? It seems, un it seems unlikely, but... I mean, we've okay. taken four and a half billion years to be able to go, for humans to be able to go as far as the moon. How long would it take to us to develop a technology well, where we could I go mean, outside the moon? Had, we de had dinosaurs developed and along the same time frame humans had, like, had dinosaurs developed thumbs and the correct brains, they could have been... <laughs> correct brains. The correct brains. <laughs> You've been reading that eugenics I, book. I, you know, I, uh, I'm going to disagree with <laughs> the whole probability know. thing. Um... Because um, okay, probability was the wrong word. Because statistically speaking, with how many stars and how many planets there are, Drake's equation yeah. of yes, but at the same time, it's taken us four and a half billion years to reach just the moon. But we only got four and a half billion years. We got less than four and a half billion years before the sun kills us all. Right, but to be honest, we've done that in less than four hundred years from getting the equations of Newton. Uh, we've gone to the moon. But have, the same and, the same may not apply to a, a civilizations on another planet where it could they could still be stuck with like you know a Galileo excommunicated from the church because he's saying they're not at the center of the solar system, and then you have some force that is right, uh, so, preventing further 
So the probability, Progress. the probability mm-hmm. is not one, mm-hmm. which means 100% mm-hmm. in statistical language. Um, so the probability is not 100% that these species, these 25 million, up, upwards of 25 million species are going to, mm-hmm. uh, all going to all of a sudden get um, uh, warp drive or hyperspace drive. Uh, and be able to start flying throughout the galaxy. Mm-hmm. But it's also not zero. Yeah. Well, I mean, if we look at Star Trek, it just takes one to come visit us and give us the tech. Well, we, 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 we yeah, got we there were first. already working on We it. got the warp drive first, and then Vulcans came down. And then Vulcans came. Yeah. They, were, they, they well, happened well, to be well, passing well, through. Well, technically, Liz. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Um, Katie says, unless the civilization was way more intelligent than us, bigger-brained aliens. So there's a super cool theory out there um, as to why we don't see civilizations out in the solar system. Or, uh, sorry, in the, in the galaxy. Because like you said, with the Drake's equation, um, that takes what exactly do, you, do we call it the constraints of the Drake's equation? Um, it has to, the civilization has to be be able to broadcast a signal. Basically, they have to develop okay. a way to utilize yeah. radio waves. Yeah, it, it, yeah. yeah it, it like takes into the amount of stars in the galaxy, yeah. planets around it, yeah. habitable possibility life got going, mm-hmm. and how many of them actually got you know wavelengths out there, mm-hmm. radio wavelengths. Mm-hmm. Um, so this kind of theory is. Uh, we don't hear anything out there in the in the galaxy because there is one big bad galaxy, one big bad race out there that eats up the other uh, species, and so everyone out there knows enough just to stay quiet. And here Earth is being a bunch of dummies sending our stuff out into the broadcast, you know, world saying, "Hey, I love Lucy. Do you?" And they're going to come and eat us one day. So that's one theory as to well, why the galaxy is quiet. They clearly haven't watched our movies yes. and know enough about the human race. Bring it. Well, we saw um, oh, with the, <laughs> the last um, Nick Frost trilogy, um, End of the World. Is that what was it called? Oh, World's End. World's End. World's End. That was a fun movie. Yeah. Kind of like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I mean, and if you think about just how we haven't had any extraterrestrial interactions yet, and we haven't with SETI... The search for extra terrestrial intelligence, um, you know, we haven't found anything yet. I mean, clearly the expanses of space are so big, but then that also means that there isn't another civilization that has developed the technology to then traverse those distances to interact with others, or at least has gotten to us. Right, or to a terrifying point, like UFOs what? don't count. UFOs are just unidentified flying objects. They could be it cows mean with drones. Aliens. God. Uh, anyway, so th- there are okay. So this first thought isn't really that sad, the terrifying second thought is the first thought is what if we are actually the species leading the charge with oh this kind of technology? God, like not. we are, we are the oh ones in no. front right now, and all the other civilizations oh. they're still in the horse and buggy age, if you will. Oh God! Then I am Wh- sorry. Which, which actually, you know, if you go back too early in the, in the universe, there's too much radiation and stuff to actually get life going. So we're kind of in that happy zone right now to be able That's to have true. life flourish. I mean, so it's possible okay. we are actually one of the first civilizations out there. I mean, if we look at... So I guess we have to look at kind of galactic evolution. Yeah. You know, we think about planetary or stellar evolution but what does galactic evolution kind of look like in terms of then the rate of well, star formation and how many like would the, yeah. would our planet essentially in our solar system be evolving at the same rate as as something else well the, the shitty thing about that is the other galaxies they're millions of light years away so we will never actually know like, even if you have the stars tech uh, you know, you have, speaking of Star Wars again, uh, you have in Legends, so before Disney took over, mm-hmm. you have the, what do they call it? Uzve. They, there's some kind of force um, insensitive beings that come in from a different galaxy. But that's only one time it's ever happened, even in Star Wars. Uh, so in the real life, to have the technology to go from one galaxy to another galaxy, that's incredible. That seems, yeah, that's, that's godlike. That's as, as godlike. Look, we're point. just having an issue with our own galaxy right now. I mean, I mean, it seems that then it could be likely that there are other civilizations that are on the same rate of evolution as us. But but then again, our evolution, there's so much chance that that was involved. Yeah. 
for us evolving in the first place and us maintaining that rate of evolution to where we are now. Yeah, here, all right, here's the thing. Um, he says we, something. We, how, how long have we been sending signals out? Since uh, 1936, 1946, yes, uh, uh, opening ceremony of Hitler. the Berlin Olympics with Hitler as our ambassador to the universe. Okay, so, so, so 85 years. We, we have been sending signals Which out. Which is nothing. Which is nothing. Um, I mean, sure, there are a lot of stars that um, would... Um, there are a lot of stars that that 85 light years... I mean, because it's 85 plus 85... Um, which is 170, so 170 light years diameter circle. There's a lot of stars in that. Yeah, we got a couple. However, the galaxy is there's so That's many true. astronomically yeah. billions, big, billions, hundreds of billions of stars that are beyond that, um, beyond that 170 light year bubble, and. Um, I say that there is a lot of intelligent life out there. It's just got to be probability. Uh, probab the probabilities are that there has got to be intelligent life out there. It's just that it's well beyond anywhere that we have sent any kind of signals because yeah. our signals uh, are 85 light years away uh, from, from the Earth. Let's just be generous that are 100 light years away. And we'll just say radio, like radio, yeah. radio. Um, but, but but then that also means that the other civilizations out there, if they should, should they be out there, um, they would also be in their own local bubble. They've either A, not progressed enough to have their technology go out, um, B, have been putting out the wavelengths for 100 years, but again, just like us, not long enough, mm -hmm. or C, advanced to a point where they put wavelengths out, but no longer anymore because they've advanced to some other technology. Or, which is or, or D, we're doing. D we're doing exist. Which is what we're doing. I, I think a whole radio window is really is really small. Uh -huh. It's got to be. But then you, I mean, you had, I mean, our sun, of course, is, and Jack, I'm going to get to your question in a second, uh, but our That's sun is... A, a, a middle of the road star. I mean, there are some, there are mm -hmm. red dwarfs that have been living a lot longer that then could yeah. have planets closer to them that have been able to have much longer standing civilizations. Yeah, but but red dwarfs are more prob um, problematic because they're um, they got a lot of flares going off. They they have a lot of yeah. But it could be a different so, kind of life that has evolved that we don't know true. yet because we don't have that. There's data. a great book called "Gods Themselves." There's a whole it, it's an Asimov book. It, it, mm -hmm. it kind of realizes a whole different type of life of just energy, and they go through energy life forms mm -hmm. throughout their life. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's we're used to carbon based life. Yeah, the, yeah. Silicon actually works very similar to carbon. Um, Looking at you, Titan. So, so Jack asked the question: What generation of star would you put the sun into? That's a really good question. Um, I was hoping you knew. So, there's actually there's actually a gen know. there's actually a generation list of stars. Is there? there is. Um, I forget exactly where the star list. Yeah, first generation, second, second generation. generation. I think we're like third or fourth generation stars. That sound about right? No, or population two stars, I think. Oh, generation two star. Okay. Um, it, well, it, they're called population. <laughs> um, um, and and I actually all right. So you have population one and population two. Yeah, look it up while I just drawn on while you look it up. Do um, it. <laughs> so I and I believe it's backwards. Population one uh, stars are, um, and please correct me if I'm wrong. Population one stars are stars like our sun mm -hmm. in that they have metals in them, which is really anything beyond helium yeah. and for phys uh, astrophysicists. Um, so you're going to find a lot of uh, lithium and carbon, oxygen, and shit like mm -hmm. that. Um, well, lithium lithium was created in the Big Bang. Um, yeah. and, uh, but population two, I believe, are the original stars. That's population Low three. Low in metal. Population three stars are first generation stars. Oh, okay. All right. So, like in astronomers, I mean, it's just right. like magnitudes. Like, yeah. So, they just like make it backwards. So, <laughs> so, population three are the original stars. Yes. So, if you were to look at these stars, they just have hydrogen and helium in them. So, the bigger of these 
population three stars, um, you know, burn. They they be the supernova. They explode and send carbon and oxygen and all that out into the universe, and they seed these other nebulae that are out there. And then I guess those become population two stars because they have more metal. Mm -hmm. So what would be population one? Even more metal? Look it up. <laughs> you know, uh, is... So my first thought when you were talking was actually then thinking about how Man, many civilizations ha have there been that no longer exist in our galaxy? Um, but then my my oh, second, <laughs> but then my second thought uh, it's a population is, two star right there, am I right? Is if a speed, I mean, if we think about evolution of a species, is that rate biologically or physically like a standard rate of development? You know, like how well, you, like yeah. the length of time it's taking us to reach the intellectual level well, that I mean, we have. That, that depends how quickly you reproduce and can give your traits onto the next generation. Yeah, whether that's so. twenty four hours, whether that's two weeks, a hundred years. Yeah. It really just depends. You know, tortoises can live for a hundred years but can reproduce for eighty of those years. Um right, so I was right. Yeah. All right, so, yeah, population one. Okay, cool. Oh, I was right. <laughs> um, Jack says, it seemed that we were the later part of that population because of our uranium ratios. Yeah. Have met us. Um, yeah, yeah and, but in that article you showed me, they have, uh, or that web website, I should say, they have extreme population. I, I saw that, yeah. yeah. So. And then it's, and then there's the factor of once a species reaches a certain level of evolution of, of intellectualness where they can figure things out and utilize radio waves or what have you, uh -huh. you know, then like for us, we're dealing with the issue of climate change. Yes. And also as, the acute proliferation. Uh, yes. Still, still there. Um, like as years ago. basically ex existential threats that we brought upon ourselves. Yes. You know, so then it's a factor of then civilizations, you know, what threats then have they developed themselves but, or, or are have mitigated or... But, and, and to be fair, that, that is one of the later issues to come to a threshold in the civilization. If you got to the point where you can destroy yourself, you're sufficiently kind of set. You're ready to go. You just get that past that point and you'll face other existential threats down the road. Yeah. But at least you can pass the first I mean, one. Um I apologize. No, no, no. I just put this finger up because that's how I talk in general. No, I wasn't, si I wasn't silencing you. Um, my, my favorite um, kind of issue as to why there isn't there more be life out there. Tonight. There will be somebody will be murdered. It will hopefully be like chicken wings, not me. Um, it's called the Great Filter. And mm. the Great. Is that familiar? Yeah, I think yeah. Heard the Great Filter, um, it's. W one of the theories as to why there's no great life out there is because there's some kind of filter that life cannot progress to, whether it's climate change or nuclear proliferation. It's like, it's like a universal or, natural selection. Yeah, or even if that's going from single cell to multi cell, mm -hmm. even that was a huge jump. Yeah. So there is some filter along that timeline that life has just an incredibly yeah. difficult time yeah. getting through. So it may be if we go to any other planet out there in the galaxy, they may have single cell life everywhere. Mm -hmm. They just can't make that jump to multi cell. And then what I was going to say is then the problem, the ultimate problem of any intellectual species is then how do you outlive the lifespan of your star? You have to develop, you have to develop, develop some form of space travel to get to a destination well, that will support you, your you way of life a, or make a destination suitable for your way of life. You, you bring up a great point. The filter, I think one of the biggest filters is the universe is actively trying to kill you. Yes, Very it is. So. It's not, it's a hostile place, everyone. It's not great. Yeah, it, it, you, you know, I mean, left to our own devices, sure, every every society, I mean, every every planet that has life on it can probably evolve to uh, a, a point, point where... themselves? Well, okay. Well, you know, <laughs> evolve to a point where people, uh, where the life can figure out how to send radio signals out, how to travel um, through the stars. However, but, but, but really quick, go ahead. Life uh, finds a way. 
<laughs> Life finds a fucking way. It does. It does. It but does. when the universe is actively trying to kill you, and then when you add on to uh, on to that, you trying to kill yourself. I mean, it seems like at least here um, we are constantly trying yeah. suicide. I mean, we like our plastics. Um, we like we our like no air conditioning, and <laughs> and we don't like solar power like, for some reason. We like money. I guess money is the thing yeah, that is really detrimental. Money needs to be abolished. It just needs to be. <laughs> I'm a big fan of Star Trek. Yeah. Oh God, yeah. yeah. It needs Coast to be abolished. Yeah. I, if we we just need then we just need the uh, what? fucking replicators. Which I'm just saying, if you took Jeff Bezos and took his wealth and just distributed it, we'd all be okay. Oh, we'd be more than okay. That'd be yeah. fantastic. You um, know, we money, money is inherently. Um, unequal. There's in- inequality in money because it's not like um, you can leave it for people to see the world beyond their own best interest. Bezos and everybody is a prime example you of that. fucking Musk. We got issues. Bill Gates. You know, I Bill I, Gates. There was one point where I thought that Elon Musk was going to be like a, a Tony Stark-esque billionaire. Yeah. I mean, just... Just think. Of Musk. Not, you know, still it, hire me. just fucking abolish money and let everybody. I'm not saying that, you know, tweets um, to their own means or whatever the fuck the Communist Manifesto is, but, um, you know, to their own abilities. But why don't we just make everybody equal, abolish money, and feed everybody. Make sure that everybody gets an education. And then everybody can just make do what sure, they want to do. Make sure lives. everybody has... That sounds like socialism to me. You only oh, got one life. Enjoy Then it. you know what? I'm a socialist. And fuck all the right-wing people who who say that socialism is We bad. We set up a... As, as a human species, we set up a really... Uh, over the hundreds of thousands of years, we have set up this weird system where we have to basically work ourselves to death and not enjoy life in order to live. Uh, yeah. For some so reason, as, we have the ability to change that now, but we're not. So it's like the tagline to Braveheart. Every man, every man dies, but not every man really lives. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Thanks, 1996 Mel Gibson. <laughs> Before we found out you were a super racist. Oh, the worst kind of person. Oh, I mean, but man. just think how far humanity could go. I, you know, seriously. So far. We we have come a long way mm-hmm. in our understanding of the universe. Mm-hmm. And and earlier, um, we, we, we talked about Einstein. And, mm-hmm. you know, the whole, you're no Einstein and this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. How many Einsteins never existed because they were never given the opportunity who, to exist? Who did that great quote? Um, the, uh, Bernard Shaw. I think he had the great quote of, you know, I, I don't cry for, you know, I forget what it was, but I, I cry for the amount of Einsteins that died in the rice field or something like that. Yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah, and, I mean, yeah, if and, you think about and it's that, all about right? money. It, it yeah. really and truly... Um, you know, my mom would say that the ills of society is money, mm-hmm. and she was right. I mean, sure, she <laughs> I mean, well, white I mean, privilege, just, but it's just all these like it's money <clears throat> and all these just bullshit prejudices that we've invented well, yeah. to then benefit whoever is dominant in a society. So, is it is it money that's the great filter? Oh, that could be that could be so our money? great filter. Is, is is yeah the um, distribution it's, of wealth the great uh, filter? That's and, one of them. That's money one of and them. white people are our great filter. Well, okay, all right. Let's let's generalize the whole white people comment where it okay. is where it is money is a filter. Um, racism um, being the catch all term there um, is a filter. But what, what, what would racism look to? The species that have different skin color, but they have different size ores of the energy. Well, race. That's why I say it's a catch all thing. Yeah. It's, you know. hate, it's hatred about the clans. Of, I mean, <laughs> of the others. Yeah, of the others. I've always know. wondered, Sorry. like, is there are other species that exist out there um, in our galaxy or beyond? You know, um, uh, fuck, I just lost it. Damn it, alcohol. I'm going to get it. Um, but it is. Oh, uh, do other species also have the us versus them 
mentality that we've evolved with based on survival. Which and, evolved based I mean, on survival. I mean, survival. Awesome, dude. We, we can look at like wolves, for example. Wolves have their own packs they go into, yeah. and they go into yeah. different territory. They will attack that wolf because they are the other. So yeah. I would say absolutely, because it's, mm-hmm. well, again, that's biased towards us and our experience, because that's yeah. what we know. That's the data point we have. Yeah. It seems I, like a I'm going to say, thing. though, that you cannot advance with an us versus them mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. attitude. So, or, you that diversity. or, you can see, after, is the only way you can advance to a certain point having an us versus them. You have to one up each other and make sure you survive. Mm-hmm. Well, survive yeah. Okay, so that, that, that is another theory as the only civilizations out there that actually get to interstellar, interplanetary, is actually the mentality that has they have prey. They have to go hunt because they are constantly on the go. Mm. That, that's a theory out there. Yeah. That's not what I think. Here's or the thing. has there been a civilization? I'm gonna let you talk in a second. Has there been a civilization that has figured out, hey, if we just all work to fucking together, then we can travel the universe? Right, but you know, here's the thing. Um, the us here's versus the them that that actually add it as a drinking thing because I think that ought to be a drinking rule. Uh, us, uh, <laughs> Hold on, let's just pause to say goodbye to Jack. He says, cool conversation to show off to host drag queen gay oh, night. Jack, and I love yeah. so much. Yes. Have fun with those drag queens. Tell all the drag queens that we say hi, Cosmos Cosmos. Um, and, and join us. Have fun. Have fun. And, and um, we'll be in drag next week or next show. We went down the rabbit sorry. hole again. As we do. It's the hangover. I forgot what it was. I can talk about. about why life doesn't exist or why it does all night long. So. What's another, uh, a quick little topic we can kind of put everything in the bow in? Because at this point, we're going two hours in. That's typical. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what your point is. Well, we started with, is the Milky Way made of milk? No. We but it have discovered been. that it is not no. made of milk. We have discovered, not anyone else. No. It was us here today. today. No other physicist, astrophysicist. We have gone beyond Einstein. Beyond any mortal can comprehend, Cosmos with Cosmos went further. <laughs> All right, anyway, um, oh, I need my glasses for this. Why don't we do Skittles for a second? All right, let's, let's, Space let's, Skittles. Have a, let's go into Skittles. And I guarantee that no other civilization in this galaxy, at least, has Skittles. No, they So we do win. Not. Um, I, I say this only because um, I took the time to actually calculate this. So yeah, he, likes doing math. he likes doing math. I, I do. We like to give him math to do because he enjoys it. All right. So um, the amount of Skittles. Wait, wait. Really quick. So this is my first time here in person. I've never been able to see his iPad. He has a document called Space Skittles. And how far up does it go? Oh, yeah, wait a minute. Hold on. It. Hold on. Um, oh, shit. Um, we have he has multiple tabs. He has multiple tabs within his Excel sheet of space skills, folks. Based on his different calculus. calculus this is shoes. fabulous. <laughs> okay, this is what we're in. Let's do it. You want me to share this with you? I can share it with you. It's a little bit. A little bit. Got to see. All right. So um, the number of Skittles that it would take to fill the volume of the Milky Way. Oh my God. 25,878 septillion, septillion, quadrillion. I don't even know what that number is. Right. So septillion is one followed by 24 zeros. I can't. I can't. But that's not even, that's more zeros. I can't even do it. I can't even. It, yeah, it is 2.58 times 10 to the 67 Skittles. That is, um, that is basically... 2.5 2.5 followed by Skittles. 66 Skittles. That, does that that. include like dark matter? Does that does that account for all the ones I've That's just the volume. That's oh. the volume. Okay. All right. So, um, okay. Yeah. All right. So, what I decided to do was then how many gallons of milk is that? <laughs> how many gallons of milk is the Milky Way? Yep. 1.79 <laughs> septillion, septillion, quadrillion gallons of milk. That's, one point, that's enough milk to kill you, folks. Basically, 1.8 followed by 62 zeros. Yeah, it'll kill you. It'll kill you. All right, so um, and then how many years would it take to fill, the milk, to produce the amount of milk? Oh, poor Bessie. Oh, poor cows. 
Poor cows. Oh my god. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Is, it, is this based off one cow? Is it based off the amounts of milk? It is based year? on the amount of milk that is produced every year. Okay, so year, this, this is the Earth this worldwide. Is national yearly milk so, based on national yearly milk production. What yeah. international? Yeah, it's the international okay. it is we take every country on the earth. Okay. Every single cow that's making we're milk. We're all one. One yeah. globe, one people. Yeah. It would take Thirteen thousand one hundred and twenty-three and one quarter year, uh, uh, thirteen thousand one hundred twentty-three point two five septillion there it is. years. There it is. That's, a, that, that's not bad at all. Yeah, oh, no, oh. It takes... holy shit! Katie, Katie says a bad time to be lactose intolerant. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> am I right? You know what? It just it substitute with cashew milk. You're fine because apparently um, that's what we have. I I, I base the uh, volume of the Milky Way based on Phil Plate's estimate. So, uh, size of the volume of the Milky Way. Well, well, one of the cool things, speaking of Phil Plate and the size of the galaxy, uh, like eight years ago or something like that, we went down to Tucson to see the Astronomy Expo. Yes. And Phil and Phil Plate was down there. Yeah. And after he gave the talk, which was great, um, you know, I went up to him and talked to him for a second. You know, I worked in the planetarium up in, up in Phoenix. Um, what, what's one thing you would love an audience to know more about? Like, what should more people know? And without missing a beat, he goes, "How big space is." Yes. And space is just mind blowingly big. It, it, yeah. It's it's brain meltingly built big. Like it, it it's you can't comprehend And you can't underestimate it how big it is either. The vastness of it. I mean it's just it, it's it's indescribable really. I mean you could throw out all these numbers and and distances like, and whatever. How long would it take to walk to the moon? A long fucking time. <laughs> yeah, it's just yeah, but you know, all right, so unimaginable with our really at this with I our mean, puny as a, human brains. Yeah, as evolved yeah. as we are, really, it's we're nothing. Yeah, and you know, just I'm gonna drink driving it. from <laughs> from Phoenix to Salt Lake City, uh, Phoenix to Ogden, uh, twelve hours. Uh, driving from Ogden. Eating Chinese food the whole way. <laughs> uh, driving from Ogden, orange beef. <laughs> driving from Ogden uh, to the Bay Area. Oh, God. twelve hours. If we were to go to Oregon, mm-hmm. twelve hours roughly. Well, you know, mm-hmm. eleven hours. Yeah. So, so what you're telling me is anywhere in the universe is twelve hours away. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's just what I heard. Exactly. Those are facts, people. <laughs> exactly. It's like in it's like in Hawaii where um, everything is twenty five hundred miles away from oh. Hawaii. <laughs> So, yeah. L.A., wherever, it's just 2,500 miles away. Um, Katie on YouTube asked, how big is the funnel to milk the Milky Way? 42. 42, 42 funnel units. 42 units. 42 yeah. funnel units. It's always 42. It's always 42. Also, how do we wrap this up? Like, we, we just, we, <gasps> we literally talked about the birth of civilizations. This and This is a great. Yeah, how? how Get rid we, of money. <laughs> Get rid of money. Okay, here's what I would like to say to anybody watching or listening but watching because only the hangovers go on YouTube and nowhere else um, you know I would recommend and I would say that we would all endorse this is at some point go out away from the city lights yeah. go to a dark area out camping what have you at night and just look up and just look at the cosmos you will see this haziness of the milky way of our own galaxy going above you and just just bask in it and just mm-hmm. let, let those photons of a thousand year, years old end their journey in your eye sockets yes and just enjoy it and just appreciate the life that you have and the world that you live in because in all honesty you're not going to get another one no. Ouch. Uh, <laughs> Ouch. I mean, really. <laughs> Our lifespans are short, so. God damn, I'm going to drink again. <laughs> but, I, you know, I recommend anybody, everybody to see the Milky Way galaxy at least once in their lives. And to do that, you need a dark area. So you need to find the middle of nowhere at night and look up and... And yeah. that's where you live. And at first, you may not realize that's the actual Milky Way. You no. may think it's a whip of clouds. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know. I didn't know. Like, Wait a minute. What's that? It's a Lord of the Rings reference, guys. You oh, God damn it. What's that with a cloud? It's not crows. I, but you know what? You know what? Even if you can't, even if you cannot get out to a dark location, just go out. Still look up. 
Just go look up. And you you notice the stars, different colors. There are things that Mm -hmm. blink, things that don't blink. Download us. Download Google Sky Maps on your phone. Yeah, Sky Safari. You can can see, you know, what you're looking at and you can learn something. If we all looked up once in a few days, we live in a much better world than we currently do. I think we would. I think we would because the sky is a lot bigger than all of our lives. The sky is no limit. (laughs) And with that, I think um, we'll say goodbye, everybody. What do we talk about next time? It is. How big is it? How, how much of a bang was a big bang? Say how big is a big bang? How much of a shit. bang was the big bang? How much of a bang was a big bang? How much of a bang was a big bang? Everybody, join us live bang? next time on Cosmos and Cosmos coming to you live on April, whatever the day is here in two uh, weeks. We'll see you in two weeks. Uh, thanks for Cheers, joining us everybody. here. Stay safe. See you later. Stay safe. We'll Stay healthy. Bye, everybody. It was fun. We're we're still going live because we're I don't still know. going live. I don't know what computer I'm using. There's a computer. <laughs> there are drinks involved. <laughs> There's a lot of liquids. Right.